Welcome to the Shift Gold Friday Gold Wrap, your overview of this week's precious metals news. It's Friday, December 14th. I'm your host, Mike Meharry. Thanks for tuning in. Well, it was another volatile week on the stock market. Markets rallied on Wednesday, primarily due to optimism about progress in the trade war. And it was up again yesterday, but it also put in new lows this week. The wild mood swings seem to be primarily driven by the good news, bad news yo-yo with this trade war. This week, it's mostly been good news. According to the latest reports, China seems to be making somewhat significant changes to come in line with U.S. demands. On Wednesday, China bought soybeans. It was the first major purchase since the so-called trade war truce earlier this month. This provides some relief for U.S. farmers who have struggled to find buyers for the record large soybean harvest. Now, I've said this before, but betting the stock market on the latest trade war news just confounds me. One minute, things are progressing, and then, well, the next minute, they aren't, and then they are, and then they aren't, and on and on it goes. Anyway, gold is off a bit this week. After pushing close to the 1250 mark last week, the price of the yellow metal has dropped below 1240 and is on track for its biggest weekly decline in five. Analysts describe this as a retracement or a corrective pullback after gold hit five-month highs last week. The price dip in gold is primarily due to dollar strength. The greenback gained against a basket of major currencies helped by a dip in the euro after the European Central Bank reduced growth and inflation projections for the next year and said the balance of risk was tilted toward the downside. Speaking of the ECB, Mario Draghi announced yesterday that the European Bank will finally shut down the money printing press. The ECB has ended its quantitative easing program. Although the European bank is moving forward with tightening during a press conference after the meeting, Draghi gave a downbeat assessment for European Union economic growth prospects. But metal prices weren't really moved much on this. It did help the dollar, though. Phil Streibel, a senior commodity strategist at RJO Futures in Chicago, said it looks like ECB President Mario Draghi was a little more dovish than expected. So we are seeing the euro currency back off and the dollar strengthening, and this is weighing on gold prices. There's also increasing negativity about the U.S. economy. The risk of a U.S. recession in the next two years has risen to 40%, according to a Reuters poll of economists, who also found a significant shift in expectations toward fewer Fed interest rate hikes next year. And speaking of the Fed and interest rates, the U.S. Central Bank will be at the center of the news cycle next week as it enters into its December meetings. Everybody expects a rate hike. The real question is what kind of hints will Powell and company give us about future rate hikes? As you probably know, the Fed chair launched a trial balloon late last month saying that the interest rate might be close to neutral. This despite the fact that if you factor in the consumer price index numbers, the Fed funds rate is actually still negative. And when you add taxes to the equation, the after-tax yield on government money is very negative. Simply put, current interest rates are still highly stimulative. As Peter Schiff put it in his podcast this week, the problem for the Federal Reserve is that they're trying to keep this bubble from imploding, but the task is impossible because enough air has already come out of it. It's already been pricked. Interest rates have already risen to the point where the camel's back has been broken. Now, a former Fed chair was in the news this week. Janet Yellen flip-flopped like a gymnast on the tumbling mat this week. Remember back when Janet Yellen was heading up the Federal Reserve and she claimed there won't be another financial crisis in our lifetime? Now, you don't have to think back too far. That was just about 18 months ago, Tuesday, June 27, 2017, to be precise. But now that Yellen has vacated the Eccles Building and taken up residence at the Brookings Institute, she's changed her tune. In fact, she's singing an entirely different song. During a talk at City University of New York this week, Yellen said she fears there will be another financial crisis. Now, assuming she doesn't plan on dying anytime soon, she apparently means this is going to happen within her lifetime. Yellen said that while things have improved, there are gigantic holes in the system. 
She said, I do worry that we could have another financial crisis. Yellen specifically mentioned leveraged loans and corporate debt as a looming problem. And of course, she's not wrong. According to the S&P LSTA Leveraged Loan Index, the total leveraged loan market has doubled since 2008 and has grown by about 17% this year alone. Currently, there are some $1.12 trillion in outstanding leveraged loans. Now, when you hear leveraged loan, just think subprime loans for companies. On top of that, there is currently about $9.1 trillion in total outstanding corporate debt. To put that in perspective, corporate debt stood at about $4.9 trillion in 2007 on the cusp of the Great Recession, so nearly double. In another brilliant observation, Yellen said the high level of corporate leverage could lead to a lot of corporate bankruptcies if there is an economic downturn. Yes, Janet. Yes, it could. But it's not like this just happened over the last 18 months. In fact, it was Yellen and Ben Bernanke's 0% interest rates and quantitative easing that facilitated this massive run-up of corporate debt. And it was on purpose. That was the whole point of this Fed policy to stimulate the economy with easy money. Now, all of a sudden, just 18 months out of the Fed chair, Yellen has seen the light. She sees what she's done. But she won't take responsibility for it, which I'm sure shocks you. Nope. Yellen took no responsibility at all for blowing up all of the current asset bubbles and the debt bubbles and setting the stage for the crisis she now admits might be looming around the corner. In fact, she wants to do more of what got us here. She said the Fed, quote, probably could have done more quantitative easing. She said public criticism of the central bank's bond buying program held it back. So really, what we needed was a bigger bubble, more air blown into the bubble. This is yet another example of government. And I don't care what people say about the Fed being a private bank. For all practical purposes, it is an extension of the federal government. So this is another example of government creating a problem and then demanding that we need more of what created the problem to fix the problem that it created in the first place. Speaking of creating problems, let's talk about the Republicans for a minute. Do you remember back in the day when the GOP was the party of fiscal responsibility? Do you remember Republicans constantly chastising Barack Obama for his spendy ways? Well, the party of fiscal responsibility is spending the U.S. government into a black hole at about the same rate Obama did. The difference is we're not in the midst of an economic downturn. In fact, the economy is booming. Or so I'm told. So this week, we got the latest deficit numbers. The U.S. federal government ran a $204.9 billion deficit in November. This follows on the heels of a $100.5 billion deficit in October. Through the first two months of 2019, this budget year, current fiscal budget year, the deficit has totaled $305.4 billion. That's a 51.4% increase over the first two months of fiscal 2018. And it's not like 2018 was a banner year for fiscal discipline. Now, revenue is actually up slightly through the first two months of this fiscal year, mainly because we're collecting more in tariffs. But spending is up way more, 18.4% more than the same period last year. The only other time the federal government has run deficits this high was during the four years from 2009 through 2012 when the Obama administration boosted spending to grapple with the 2008 financial crisis. We ain't grappling with the financial crisis right now, and yet spending is still out of control. We are spending like we are in the midst of a great recession. Now, Republicans that I know keep making excuses, and they persist with this myth that tax cuts are going to help us grow out of our budget problems. Look, this is a fairy tale. In the first place, debt retards economic growth. I've hammered this point several times in past podcasts. And in the second place, we're heading toward a recession. That's the opposite of economic growth. At some point, Somebody, somewhere, needs to get serious about addressing the spending problem. The simple fact is government is too big. This 
is unsustainable. But the Republican plan seems to be kick the can down the road until the Democrats are back in power and then blame them. Well, they'd better be careful because we're about to run out of road. I don't know about y'all, but I'm fed up. I'm fed up with the Fed. I'm fed up with Congress. I'm fed up with presidents, all of them. I'm fed up with the whole political process, to be honest. But here's the thing. There really isn't a whole lot we can do about it other than protect ourselves as best we can from the consequences of all of this government malfeasance, this central bank malfeasance. One way to do that is to invest in precious metals. If you want to learn more about how gold and silver can help preserve your wealth from the actions of these clowns, call a Shift Gold Precious Metal Specialist at 1-888-GOLD-160. These folks are great. They can tell you all about investing in precious metals. I highly encourage you to have a chat with them. Well, that's a gold wrap for this week. You can get more details on all of these stories and more and keep up with the latest precious metals news and analysis throughout the week at shiftgold.com news. And if you haven't done it already, you can subscribe to the Friday Gold Wrap over at iTunes or on the Shift Gold YouTube channel. You'll find links on the show note page to both of those. If you're listening on YouTube, share your thoughts on this week's gold news in the comment section. We always love to get your insights and hear what you think about what's going on with the economy and precious metals. And I want to encourage you also to check out the recent issue or the recent episode of It's Your Dime, my interview series this week. I talked to Chris Blasi. He's an expert in investing in precious metals, and we talk about what's going on in the precious metals market. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes page as well so you can check it out. So that's it for this week. I really appreciate you listening, and I'll talk to you next time.